Basic Auth is a quick and easy way to require authentication to access a web page. In today's video, we'll use Basic Auth to require a username and a password to access a static website and some images that we have on an S3 bucket. Instead of building our own login page, we'll use Basic Auth to use the authentication dialog provided by the browser. We'll see how to easily set up Basic Auth so that when someone tries to access our S3 bucket, they will be required to authenticate, and how to use a Lambda function to then verify the credentials provided by the user. We'll first create an S3 bucket which will be private and not accessible. We'll then upload a small static website and some files to it. Then we'll create a CloudFrod distribution which will act as a gate to our bucket and provide us with a public URL which will be the only way to access these files. Each time someone will try to access a file, a Lambda function will be executed that will require basic authentication and also verify the credentials provided by the user. The only way to access the files on our bucket will be to provide the correct username and password. If someone will try to access the files directly on the bucket, they won't be able to do so. Let's get started by creating a nest 3 bucket and uploading our secret files to it. This is the static website that we're going to protect with basic auth. We have several images and an index.html file. All this file does is present the images and then links to each one of them. When we add basic auth, we want to protect not only this index.html file, but also each one of the images as well. For example, if someone tries to access this image directly on the S3 bucket that we'll create, they should still get the basic authentication dialog. Let's create this S3 bucket and upload our static website to it. In the S3 management console, I'll create a new bucket. We want to block all public access because we want this bucket to be completely private. This way, no one will be able to access our files directly. They will have to go through our basic authentication. We'll leave all the other settings to their default values and create a bucket. Our bucket is ready. Let's upload our static website to it. Our static website is uploaded and our bucket is now ready to be used. But at this point, no one can access any of these files. So now we'll create a CloudFront distribution which will give us a URL which we then can use to access these files. As you might know, if we go to properties and scroll down, there's also an option to enable static website hosting, which is currently disabled. But that's not something we want to use because we only want to allow access to our bucket through our CloudFront distribution. Let's switch to the CloudFront console and create the access point to this bucket. We'll create a new CloudFront distribution. In the origin domain name, we want to select the S3 bucket that we created before. And we want to restrict bucket access. We'll also ask CloudFront to grant read permission on the bucket for us. We'll ask it to redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS. In here, we can create a Lambda function association. We won't add it just yet, but here we can configure that every time someone requests a file on our S3 bucket through this CloudFront distribution, we can execute a Lambda function and process the request. But for now, let's not enable it. In our example, we'll use the default domain that CloudFront provides us with. But if you were using a custom domain name, you would enter it here. We'll also use the default CloudFront certificate for SSL. But if you're using your own domain, this is where you would configure it to use your own SSL certificate. In one of my previous videos, I went over how to create an HTTPS connection for a static website, and I'll link to this video below. Our default root object will be index.html. This is the file that will be loaded by default. We'll leave all other configuration to their default values and create the distribution. It will take a few minutes for this distribution to be ready. But once it's deployed, we can use this domain name to access our bucket. So even though our S3 bucket is private, we have this CloudFront distribution that loads files from our bucket. And as you can see, it uses HTTPS and if we'll try to access it via HTTP, it will just redirect to HTTPS again. And we still can load each one of the files separately. What we're missing now is a Lambda function, and we want this function to execute each time someone tries to access a file on our S3 bucket. This function will check the username and password that the user provides, and if it's incorrect or if no credentials are provided, the access to our files will be rejected. If on the other hand the credentials are correct, then the Lambda function will let our user access the files. So we'll go to the Lambda console and create a new function. We'll call it Lambda Basic Auth. And we'll use Node.js 10 because this is the latest version that is supported by Lambda Edge and click create function. The way we created a Lambda is just like we would create any other function. 
But to be able to have this function link to our CloudFront distribution, we need to allow CloudFront to access it. This is a very important step, and otherwise CloudFront will not be able to execute this function. We'll go to Configuration, Permissions, we'll open the role, Trust Relationships, and Edit Trust Relationship. We want to edit the service attribute of this configuration to contain, besides lambda amazon aws.com, also the value edge lambda dot amazon aws.com. We'll update the trust policy. And now let's take a look at our function. In the code of our function, we as usual have the event object. And this object contains the request that we're going to get from CloudFront. If we'll return the request from this function, it will work just as before meaning that the request will just go through and the user will still be able to access our files as before. So let's try to save our function and then link it to our CloudFront distribution. We'll deploy and then create a new version. Our current version will be version number two. We'll go back to the CloudFront console and go back to edit our CloudFront distribution. Under behaviors, we can edit the behavior of this distribution. If we'll scroll down, we can see the Lambda function association, which you mentioned before. Using this setting, we can configure CloudFront to execute a Lambda function each time there is a view request to any of our files on our bucket. So we'll check viewer request. In here, we need to provide the ARN of this Lambda function. So if we'll go back to our function, we can get this value from here. So we'll just copy it and then paste it as the value. Note that it has the version appended at the end. We must provide a specific version for this association. We can't just provide the ARN without the version. But since we're viewing version number two here, we also have the version number appended at the end. So make sure that you have the version included, otherwise it won't work. Now we'll save our changes. It will take a few minutes until the changes take effect, but once they do, we should be able to access our S3 bucket as before. The difference is that now every time we try to access the index.html file or one of the images, our Lambda function is being executed in the background. However, since the code doesn't do anything, it just forces the request and the user gets to access the files. So let's adjust our function to actually check and require basic authentication. If you find this video useful, I would really appreciate it if you leave it a like so it will reach more people. Also, I have other similar videos about AWS. So if you find these kind of videos useful and would like to be notified when I upload more similar videos, please subscribe to my channel. Let's create this is allowed access variable. And then let's check the request. If our request contains headers and there is an authorization header, then we're getting the value of this header. This value should contain the credentials in this format. So this is the basic authentication format. It is a string that starts with the word basic and a space, and then a base64 encoded string of the username and the password. In our example, we set the username to admin and a password to pass one. But in here, you can connect to whatever data store you have that contains the usernames and passwords that you want to allow to access your files. And then we simply determine the value of is allowed access by comparing these two, the header that we received and the value that we expect with the username and password. Based on that, we determine if we want to allow the user to access the files or not. If access is allowed, as before, we'll just continue to return the request. This will allow the user to access the files. If access is not allowed, then we'll return the following response object. First, we'll set the status to 401, meaning that the user is not authorized to access this file. Then we can send a custom string back, and we'll also set this header. And this header is important because it will let our browser know that we expect basic authentication, and the browser will automatically display the authentication dialog to the user requesting a username and password. So in case there is no access allowed, then we'll return this response. We won't forward the request object, but instead we'll reject the request and require the user to authenticate. So that's pretty much all the code that we need. We'll also post a link below to the repository with the code of this function. So let's deploy a new version and then update our CloudFront distribution with the latest version of our Lambda function. The latest version is now version number three. So let's go to our CloudFront distribution and edit the behavior again. We'll scroll down to our Lambda function and in here we'll simply update from version two to version three. We'll save our changes and now it will take a few minutes, but once our changes will be deployed, our endpoint should start requiring a username and a password to access our S3 bucket. And again, as a reminder, our username should be admin and the password should be pass1. So now we can no longer access the files directly. If we try to access our S3 bucket, we have this username and password prompt 
that requires a username and a password. If we'll try to cancel it, we'll get the no plans for you message, which we return from our function. And if we'll enter incorrect values, it will not work as well. If we'll enter admin as the username and pass one as a password, then we'll get access to our static site and also to the images. As you can see now, if we refresh, we still have access to the static site. The username and password are no longer required by the browser. However, if we'll open an incognito window, which will have a different session and we'll try to access our bucket, once again, we'll be required to answer a username and a password. So let's try something else. Let's try to open an image and then go to our incognito session and access this file directly. As you can see, it will still require the authentication because our Lambda function runs no matter which file we access on our S3 bucket. Every time there's a view request, a username and a password will be required by our Lambda function. In this video, we saw how to use a Lambda function to require basic authentication so that when a user tries to access files on our S3 bucket, they will be required to provide a username and a password and they won't be able to get access otherwise. If you learned something from this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button so it will reach more people. And if you would like to be notified when I upload more videos such as this one about AWS, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.